<laughs> down in her. <laughs> down in her. That which dirty. is which which is also a perfect time to go see a movie is on a Wednesday night. Is it? Because chances are you're the only one there. Really? Yeah. Have you done that recently? I, recently, yes. Yes, yeah. I did. I was going to say, how does my camera look? Do I have stuff in the way? No. It looks I like mean, I'm a little a, more zoomed you're out. You're a little bit zoomed out than normal. Um, did you uh, change? Okay. Did you, I can zoom I you in more. I, can... I didn't change anything, so... This is how you were last week, but oh, oh maybe, I was? you know what? Maybe not. Let me try something. Yeah, here. let me. I can. Nope. Stay where you are. This... Hold oh, on. Okay. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Let's do that. How's that? Okay, I'll see. Oh, hello, face. <laughs> yes. Okay, <laughs> yes, that's, that's good. better. I think I moved my Skype window around a little bit, so that's what Aha. happened. Aha. Aha. Yeah, that's fine with me. I uh, I need to uh finish getting my room situated and fixed up because you know i got the posters and the canvas that yep. 112 gave me that i have to put up as well as all the shadow boxes mm-hmm. and and then the one with the patches in it did you see the patch one yes i saw that on twitter the real long one yeah i like that one I that, sent was that, awesome. to, uh, that was awesome i sent a picture cool. of that to to ratzel thanking her for that uh community badge yeah yeah have you tweeted the deeds? oh thank you i did not you're welcome I must do so. I th- I'm all discombobulated. It's all right. My phone hasn't blown up yet, except for the except for the I we're live thing. Yeah, I got the I got the Twitch notification. There we go. We are well, live a on a special time for night. You to destroy the litter box, whichever cat that was. Holy. <clears throat> Holy, like, oh, God. (laughs) Somebody's got a stinky butt. (laughs) Oh, Oh, no. (laughs) God. Dear Lord, cat. Yeah, if (laughs) if it smells that bad, like uh, around that bad, that it's Reesey. Reesey, for some reason... Has just gross poop. Yeah, yeah. He's just gross. I, I don't know, know why. It's probably food related for these guys. I know, like, if I give them too many treats, which I know I did the last like day or two, that happens. So, mm. <laughs> and the I, litter litter box is like on the other side of this wall, so they're yeah. they're right there. Well, I well think done, Jules. I think it might be. Uh, see, I, I'm pretty sure that animals have like gut bacteria. Oh, they and I do. I think it. I think it's. I think it's Reese's gut bacteria because Pixie, her poop is just like it's normal, normal like cat poop. It just doesn't. But then Reese will clear out that side of the house. Just, just, <laughs> he just clear like the space wall. out. <laughs> yeah, it's like a slow brown wall, just like closes you, and you're like, no. <laughs> My it's dad says it's she not does. him. Yeah, well, <laughs> dad, you've been known to clear a space before. Don't worry. We know this about you. <laughs> <laughs> I just made my uh, made my plans in mid, mid-December to go to New Jersey so Ooh. for for the holidays. So we will have another awesome. Wednesday night uh, stream unless we decide to take the week off. Um, okay. So because I will be gone Thursday to Monday. Uh-huh. Sounds good to me. Yep. It just works out best that way for timing. I have such a weird, like, little hair. There it is. I got it. A little eyelash <laughs> that was just bugging the crap out of me. <laughs> Draven looks at the topic, wonders if she's got a number. <laughs> <laughs> Not for you. She's she's attached, our listener. That is That is the case. How's everybody doing tonight? Are you guys ready for Thanksgiving? It's coming. Happy hump day. It's hump day. Hump day. Hump day. I'm sore today because uh, Nicole and Tim gave me a new workout routine this week. And uh, and it's more intense. Like, all of them are more intense. So everything just hurts. It's like, uh, uh. My, 
My everything hurts. That's pretty much what I've been saying is my everything hurts. Like, <laughs> ouch, just stand up. Oh, yeah, that's the glutes are hurting. Uh, that's why I feel that. <laughs> I feel that movement. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Did you feel Did you feel it? Oh, I felt it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I felt that. <laughs> I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> oh. And both of us are just kind of dragging today. We're tired, but it was like, Gotta, 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 gotta get, get the show in. We're gonna record the show. We're gonna do we this. We gotta go. We gotta do it. <laughs> we, we gotta got, go. We got this. We can do this. Uh, <laughs> and I was still, I was still lazy and not fixing the thing that, with the thing. So chat room, we're gonna test you guys, Sounder. Well, you should be. Trifling to... gnome. Yeah. Your arrogance will be your undoing. It's reading to the chat, so that's good. Cause that's that's what I need for the recording too. Goes right into that. Right for the recording. It's a it's a, it's a recording. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, John. I miss you too. Hey, congrats on your new show. I just saw that on Twitter. Congratulations. Ooh, what is it? Uh, John is doing a new uh, daily Overwatch League uh, recap. So Ooh. kind of like a, an ESPN style t show, I'm guessing, like, you know, That's recap of cool. sports center kind of thing for, e for Overwatch League, OWL for those in the know. Owl. <laughs> Owl. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> OWL. Oh, I smack my keyboard. Smack. Oh, smack at the keyboard. I don't want to smack the keyboard, and I did it anyway. All right, stretching. Ooh. Big stretches. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right, let me ready check the chat room. You guys ready to rumble? Most likely, this show will post on Friday morning. Um, just because I'm really tired tonight, and I've got to be up in the morning. So I'm going to I'm going to Pat's mom's house uh, tomorrow, and they live on the other side of Minneapolis. So I'm riding with Pat and his wife, um, about a 30 minute drive from where we are, and I have to be at Pat's house at 9:30 tomorrow morning because they want to eat like, you know, early afternoon. So huh. <laughs> I'm like, it's like I have to get up for work because <laughs> I have yeah, to get up and like, be ready for work. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, oh, see, okay. I, see, I'm I'm lucky in that where we're eating, it's lunch, and it's about five to eight minutes away. It's here in town, so that helps. Just a little different. It's uh, it is a good thing. It is a good thing. I'm very excited to. Uh, I've been to his mom's house before, and they're wonderful people, and you know, just you know, just very fun very casual lots of dogs all the dogs will be there so <laughs> i think both both pats and rachel's dogs are going to be there um Aww. and then they they his mom's have a dog um and uh and and no, yes they have one dog i'm trying to remember they just have lucy right yeah um and uh, so there'll be lots of dog walking i was told <laughs> like we're gonna go <laughs> go dog walking so many dog walking. Yes, yes. Hopefully tomorrow. It's supposed to be like 40 degrees tomorrow, so it should be decent. Oh, nice and balmy. Yeah. I just have to remember a hat and some gloves if I'm going to go out walking because it's yeah. going to be colder. Well, okay. And you, know, today, well, and you know today was the uh, today is the Warcraft sale on the Black Friday week. Yeah. So I bought the bomber jacket. The black you did? one. With the, I bought it today. It was half off. Oh, that's awesome. And I was like. It's like, ah, uh, and I wanted it last BlizzCon. Yeah. And I was like, 60 bucks, that's a lot. Yeah. But then it's like, 30 bucks, that's not so bad. That's not so bad at all. And I, and I got the Colossal um, Bastion, too, because it uh, was like 20 bucks off. <laughs> so I could have a giant Bastion over here. Yeah. I The only thing I bought from the Black Friday sale so far is the, um, the Heroes of the Storm Key Art Canvas. Was oh, yeah, yeah. It was twelve dollars and fifty cents for a canvas frame thing like the one you got. Yeah, well though they were fifty originally. Yeah, they were like fifty or sixty something. Twelve fifty. And I'm like, all right, I gotta get this. 
I got yeah, it. I should have I should have jumped on all of the WoW expansions when all the canvases were half off. Yeah. Or something like that during the spring sale. But they said they're going to add new stuff for Cyber Monday. Yeah. So and you got to so watch like, for that too. I was like, but I've already bought stuff. And I have to show the ah. chat room too. If I move my chair to the side, there's a very what is that box behind me? <laughs> that looks like a box of something cool inside. That is a very cool thing that I did not have time to put together today. I was able to get her out of the box or out of the big box. That's the diva statue that was gifted to me from 112. So I have to, I got the place <laughs> to put it too. Like I just set up the shelving. I don't know if you can see it. Uh -huh, I noticed that on this. Yeah, I can the see it. The shelves are here. Um, uh -huh. And uh, so I have, so she's going on the top of that. As soon as I take oh. her out of the box, probably tomorrow. So, so cool. All right. All right. All right. All right, okay, all right. Okay. 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 Joe Pesci. Dope, Joe yeah. Pesci. Pesci. <laughs> Joe, Joe Pepsi. Joe Pepsi. Joe uh, Pepsi. All right. Torrent Think Tank episode 252 goes live and records. We are live. Record. Are you ready, by the way? <laughs> yes. Okay. Be interesting. 252 records in three, two, one. You're listening to Tauren Think Tank, the podcast about the Blizzard gamer behind the keyboard. It's episode 252 of Tauren Think Tank. Today is Wednesday, November 22nd of 2017 at 811 p.m. Central Time. It is the day before Thanksgiving, which is why we are recording on a Wednesday. My name is Jules, and with me, as always, is my illustrious bomber to be wearing person. <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> phrase this, and my words aren't coming out. It's Mark Conan. The words are hard sometimes. Words it's okay. are really hard. What she's talking about is today with the uh, Black Friday sales, I, I did get the bomber jacket because it was half off and I need it in my life. So I got it soon TM. soon tm yes the wow soon one TM. the wow box yes the wow one. one yes the one that i looked at at blizzcon last year and was like oh i want that but i can't i don't want to spend that much and they're like oh well here have it for less and i'm like okay it's mine yeah yeah so there's those, that those sales are, are <laughs> evil right now and they, they they've been are. going on since monday and boy they are evil you know, and I was, I've been waiting since Saturday for, I've been waiting for this day, I've been yeah. waiting for this moment, not just for the show, but also to that, mostly for the show. I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. It's like a song. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's your favorite guy. Yes. A little Phil Collins in there. Uh, uh, I got to air drum it. Got to yes. air drum it that so it's been six <laughs> days since we last spoke to each other. We last did mm -hmm. an episode. Mark Honan, what's been shaking? What's new? As I see Garrus walking around behind me. Are they wrestling in the hallway, those cats? <laughs> they might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we all know, the American uh, Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Yes. So that means the day after that is Nightmare Day for Retail, a.k.a. Black Friday, a.k.a. I'm going to stab you when they uh, bring out this giant pallet full of cheap TVs or the blender that I really want at Walmart, and they just roll the pallet out and say, good luck, and then fists and hair and, and just uh, bodies just flying everywhere over everything. Chaos ensues. So we're getting ready for that at work. Uh, luckily, with the way that my job is now, I don't have to directly deal with that. In fact, they don't. Uh, I, I work on Black Friday, but I don't go in till noon because they don't want us there. They're like, "Don't even come in that early because we don't want you in the building." Like, just come in later after the after the rush is over. So it's uh, it's going to be a nice day off tomorrow, thankfully, and uh, then I get to sleep in and go in at noon on Friday. So I'm happy about that. But it's it's been a little hectic. Of course, everybody's getting ready for it. You know, you see the you see the look. It's like a thousand yard stare. <laughs> all the retailers eyes where they know it's coming like it's they they see the train coming down the track that they're tied to and they're like uh-huh uh-huh it's coming yeah can't fight it okay we're waiting here we go so yeah that's the that's kind of the big thing going on 
but uh, it's good. Uh, like I am so excited that I can. It's culturally acceptable for me to start listening to Christmas music on Friday. <laughs> I'm excited. Can't wait. I was talking about Christmas music uh, with with uh, with uh, clients of mine earlier today. We we're talking about music, and I'm a big fan of Chicago. Chicago's Christmas albums are fantastic. If you don't oh, it know is. what they are. Yeah, yeah, they give them are. a listen. They're oh, they're so good. So yeah, I uh, was talking music with them, and it turns out Chicago's coming to Little Rock in May. What? And I was like, oh, I've never seen Chicago live. So and it's like a week before my birthday. So that's gonna be like oh, a birthday present for me. So That's we'll see. Awesome. You know, it's funny we'll you're talking about Christmas music. I mean, here where I live, a bunch of people already put their lights up. Like the mm-hmm. week the week I got back from BlizzCon, like that week yeah. there were lights up and blazing. Nobody seemed to really care. So yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. I mean, you know, I haven't been listening to keep me like you know, I listen to music while I'm working. And mm-hmm. um since I work from home, I can pick whatever music I want. But I haven't had the drive to do the Christmas music thing. I thought about possibly like putting up a tree in the house. And then I was like, eh, I just don't have time to do it. <laughs> it's yeah. just like this thing where I was like, oh, so after tomorrow, considered to be socially acceptable for me to, you know, and I'm doing air quotes for that, to put up yeah. my tree. Um, maybe I'll do it this weekend. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Most likely I will. I've got the time. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I think a lot of people are are decorating earlier and earlier because it, it's because of anticipation of it getting so busy with everything going on, family coming in. They'd rather just get it done before before it's too hectic to do it, and that way they just have it ready to go. That's that's most of the people I've talked to that have already decorated. It's because of schedule. So yeah, hey, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, there's some houses around town that are fully griswolded out. It's yeah. just I, I drove by one of them and I was like, oh wow. That's 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 hashtag holiday goals there. Isn't that what the kids say? I'm dating myself here. <laughs> uh, There's I a, lost my soul a little bit saying that. Hashtag Ugh. holiday goals. Ugh. All right, Triple Show T title listeners. There, this is this is your job from now on is you're going to have to please Mark Honan and tag him with hashtag no. holiday goals with all the Griswold oh. places that you see in your towns. Uh, this, I want this to happen. Uh, there's a place that's in New Jersey um, that when I go visit mom and dad, we're probably gonna have to stop there. Dad, you know exactly which place I'm talking about, the one we saw last year. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or the year before. That was probably two years ago now. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have to do that for sure. Because there's just some, there's there's just certain houses that just have like the championship medal for hashtag holiday goals. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's almost like a competition. How many lights can I put on my property? <laughs> well, uh. and I realized something too. I've got, I now own my own home and I have a balcony. <laughs> I'm on the upper level of my, of my condo building and it's only like six, six units in a building, but I have my own balcony. I could potentially decorate. I could. That's I've, true. I thought about it. For about a minute, <laughs> like hmm, maybe I'll buy whatever is left over on sale after the holidays. Yeah, get, get ready year. for next year. Yeah. yeah. So I kind yeah, of like do that. it. Just like occurred to me, it was like, oh, I could decorate my balcony if I so desired, but mm. eh. 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 yeah, I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to put up my tree. I'm uh, every year I get the uh, the Star Trek ship, and pretty soon. I'm going to have enough to where I'm going to need a second tree. I'm just going to have a Star Trek ornament tree because pretty much 85% of the ornaments on our tree are all Star Trek ornaments. <laughs> Cause I mean, it, they've put out like two or three a year since 91 and I'm going back and I'm filling in the back catalog that I missed. So, uh, yeah. So <laughs> I can't wait to put those up there. Oh, I love my nerdy tree. Can't wait. I love my nerdy tree. <laughs> I love my nerdy tree. <laughs> it's awesome. I, uh, I, I, I feel you. And I think, you know, there's, there's room for ner- more than one tree in a household, except for like mine where there's cats and I only have one open spot on a table that I can put a tree. <laughs> it has to be off the floor or else there will be carnage. <laughs> yes. I agree completely. That's how it is over here. Carnage. I tell you carnage. Uh, so what else is going on anything you're just you're getting ready for the holidays and it is hectic yeah for the most part um 
that's I mean, that's pretty much the thing that's dominating it, it is just work, which is going to ramp up hardcore next week mm -hmm. because of all the prep for the holidays. Um, been listening to a lot of music lately, been, uh, you know, because I, I drive a lot for work and I've been listening to different stations, going back and listening to some older songs and, um, uh, you know, genres that I haven't listened to in a while. And it's just been a nice it's been a nice exploration of music for me. It's been a long time that I've uh, some of the songs I hadn't listened to in ages, some of the artists, some of the genres. It's just mm -hmm. I like to I like to do a deep dive into music every once in a while because that's just that's the bee's knees for me is music. So I just cave in and, you know, I'll game and do all this, all this other stuff. Oh, I did finish the uh, the priest class mount achievement Ooh, thingy. Very nice. I got the priest mount. So I've got seven out of the 12 classes done now. I'm on the downhill slope. So I finished that up, and it is awesome. I really liked the quest and the uh, the reason why we have those seekers uh -huh. that are the priest class. And it was really neat, the little scenario. It was, it was funny. It was self-aware enough to where you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's how it is. The Blizzard, you know how we feel. And it was uh, it was pretty cool. I, I enjoyed it a lot. And I've heard that the Death Knight... Uh, class uh, order hall campaign is phenomenal. So I, I that's the one I'm doing next. So I'm slowly making my way through on my death night to try and get to it, and then I'll just keep on going. So I can't I can't wait to that one too. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. That's about it for me. Uh, how are you doing? What's up with you? It's been a busy week of podcasting mm -hmm. for me. Like I didn't expect it to be this busy, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> On Sunday, I did two shows. I did uh, Dark Moon Herald and, mm. uh, in the morning, and then I did uh, a segment, other segment for Nerf This about the HGC Heroes Global Championship League. Um, yeah. their, their roster swaps, the whole thing that's going on right now because they're in the trading period. Um, oh, yeah. So all the rosters are being shuffled around and players are leaving, being recruited back in, and just it's kind of a mess and so i did a 15 minute segment for them for their most recent show which was great um and uh so when when i was on dark moon herald um I, for some reason my internet decided to go belly up like oh no to, you know and this is a very this was a very long show so it was like two and a, almost two and a half hours of recording um, and around two hours and 15 minutes in, my internet just went poof. And I had no way of communicating to the hosts like, hey, uh, my internet died. And so they didn't have, they had to like find out when I, you know, like I finally had to like restart my router and all this stuff. I'm like, what the hell oh. happened? I have no, I still don't know what happened. And uh, so I felt so bad. And they use a, a system called Zencaster, which is a, a you, you you go into this link and each person has their own um, track within the, the linking and, and that kind of thing. And at the end, okay. it's supposed to upload everybody's tracks to the host and then they get like all the individual tracks. Well, that's convenient. Because my internet died, my track never uploaded. <laughs> so oh. I was like sitting there, it just like spun and spun and spun for like two hours. And I'm like, um, I'm really sorry. I don't, I don't think it's working. Thank goodness they had like a contingency where it like apparently sends the track to the host like as a backup. I don't know what it is. Oh, okay, good. But oh man, I was just like I felt oh, so bad. No. So we did that. Um and then yesterday I was on Convert to Raid uh with Pat Grain and Thist from the Lagging Balls podcast and mm. we had a lot of fun with that. So it's just been a lot of podcasting this week. Um, oh yeah. And now doing the show uh now doing the show tonight, so yep. I'll have a little bit of time <laughs> off. I think I'm doing another roster segment on uh, Nerf this this weekend at some point. We just have to figure out when. So, um, okay, yeah. So that is what's been going on with me. Um, and just to give a little, uh, just a little teaser, like we did on on Convert to Raid, I've been working on something with Convert to Raid and the Convert to Raid Guild that we are going to be doing a mega giveaway uh, series. I, my Conan's eyes got huge. <laughs> <laughs> prizes, people. Prizes. Ooh. The Winter Vale celebration for Convert to Raid begins in Ooh. December, and it will be multiple giveaways in multiple venues and some very, very, very nice prizes. So, <laughs> yes. So, 
If you are listening to this show and you don't follow Convert to Raid on Twitter, I would recommend that you do so. You so, probably should. Probably should. So there you go. Um, yeah. So then tomorrow I go to uh, I go to spell, celebrate Thanksgiving with Pat and his family, and it's they're like my my family here in Minnesota. Should be awesome, and I'm well, good. Looking forward to it. So. Yeah, I feel like it's just been a full week, and it's only Wednesday. <laughs> so it's you know, it today. does it does feel like that. I, yeah. I was I was thinking that driving into work, it felt like a Friday already. Yeah, very much so. Like today, I was just like, I have the Friday feeling of wanting to take a nap. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I took a very large cup of coffee and I went down the pipe. <laughs> and let's keep going. Got to keep going. Let's do it. Keep moving. <laughs> and speaking of that, we're going to get into a discussion question that was submitted by a listener. And hey, let's just do it, huh? Let's just do it. Yeah. Let's kick around some. Ah! <sighs> Ideas, not gnomes. Poor gnome. Mm-hmm. Oh, poor gnome. All right. Um, we got a letter, and I will read said letter. Hey, guys. I was listening to a TED Talk the other day. I thought this could be a discussion for a possible topic for a future show. I am 35 years old in a steady relationship and have a good job. Life is good. I've never had the urge, with lack of a better word, to have children of my own. I've always been told that eventually I will get there. Before you know it, quote unquote, you'll want children, is the classic response and conversation stopper from people I try to talk to. So here I am still waiting for my mindset to change. And to be honest, the only reason I can sort of justify getting children of my own is that I don't want to be alone when I'm old. But hey, how selfish is that? How can I come to terms with being a person who doesn't want to have children Except animals. One can never have too many fur babies, right? <laughs> Sorry for the crappy English. Feel free to contact. Correct, my Norwegian infested English. Huge fan of the show. Please keep it up. Love Solo, aka Solo Vala, on Twitter. Uh, and the TED Talk that she listed, I will put it in there. Hopefully this is not going to autoplay. No. Is uh, from a woman named Kristen Reich Reiter. I think it's right writer. Um, and the title is, I don't want children. Stop telling me I'll change my mind. And um, so I, I listened to this Ted talk um, and uh, you know, the description, I'll read this real quick, real quick. It says uh, one in five women in the United States will not have a biological child. And Kristen Ryder is one of them from a young age. She knew she didn't want kids in spite of the insistence of many people, including her doctor who told her she'd change her mind in this powerful talk. She shares her story of seeking sterilization and making the case that motherhood is an extension of womanhood, not the definition. Mm -hmm. Um, I highly recommend that you listen to this. This is from the TED Talks Daily, um, and it is a um, it's a really it was, it was a really powerful episode. I yeah, liked it and quite it's a bit. it's it's not very long. It's about fifteen minutes. Yeah, about fifteen minutes long. I listened to it earlier today myself. Good. Okay. I wasn't sure if you had gotten a chance to listen to it. I the mm -hmm. the link that we had was in uh, was in Norwegian, so I had to go and <laughs> dig up the American uh, the American side in there. So anyway. Um, so I'm going to, I will state this for the record. It's no secret for anyone who knows me. I am one of those women. Mm -hmm. I have never in my lifetime ever had the urge to want children ever. Like it just didn't exist in me. And, um, honestly, I thought that I was broken. Mm. I really did. I thought I was broken. I thought, um, I thought that it was, there was something wrong with me because of exactly what Kristen says in her in her talk is that everybody told me when I was a little girl, oh, just you wait. You're going to want kids. You'll change your mind when you get married. When you have a husband, you'll want to have kids. And so I OK. And then I was like, well, but I yeah, OK, I want to get married. OK, I want to have a husband, but I don't want to have a family. And I was very clear about that. Like, you know, I've been married twice. 
Mm -hmm. And and both of my partners, both of my spouses knew right off the bat. I'm like, if you want to get married to me, you have to understand I do not want to have a child. It was like, it just, it was clear. I just knew it. (laughs) And so like in the talk that comes up on the first date. Yes. It would that she says that she's actually says, Mm -hmm. you know, that is a clear first date discussion. And, um, and I will tell you the judgments that I received in my younger years from family members, not, not my parents, my parents were like, they just knew they, they knew like they were pretty clear on it. Like they knew it was going to be grand cats (laughs) and not grand kids. And my, my, it wasn't, it wasn't them. It was extended family who were like, who were saying these things to me. That's my side of it. Um, so, and Mark Conan does not have children and is married. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, feel free. The floor is yours. (laughs) Well, you know, and you know, back to what, you know, the people are saying, oh, you're going to want kids, you know, you know, well, if if one out of five doesn't, that means 80% do. And so they're just kind of playing off what they think is the norm. So, you know, you're not broken at all. You're just part of the 20% that doesn't. So yeah, I'm, I'm 34. I'll be 35 next year and I don't have kids. Um, I go back and forth because I'm scared <laughs> like most, like most men are before they have children. They're scared of it. They're scared of, I'm scared of messing up. I'm scared of not being a good dad. I'm forgetful enough of my own things and to put some to put another human being under my care, I think is on the whole not the best idea. But you know, who's to say my mindset won't change once I uh, realize that there's you know another human being that I helped create right there. So I don't know because I haven't gotten there yet. But you know, I do go back and forth. I think I, I think I do want kids. I, I I would like to because I see my nephew. And he's eleven. And I have I have examples of of good fathers in my life, mm-hmm. uh, more good than bad. My best friend Daniel, he he's he has two wonderful children, and they're nerdy, video game loving. Like like the youngest, he's he's old enough, or the oldest, he's old enough to play WoW with his dad, which I think is awesome. You know, I like playing video games and showing my nephew stuff that I like because he likes it too, and that that idea of of sharing. And Ed, and, you know, it, you know, teaching somebody all these cool things and seeing their eyes light up when they do this stuff, you know, that kind of idealized image, you know, that sticks with me. That's one reason why I, I would like to have kids because I think that and I do have that little bit of pressure of being of being the one with the family name, which you know, yes, it's archaic, yes, it's this, yes, it's that, but it's still there and I still feel it, right. and. Um, and, and it's no secret, my, my wife has gotten pressure from my side of the family at family gatherings of of having, you know, well, so when are you going to have kids? When are you going to have this? And uh, it, it got to the point, it, it, it became a major source of contention and, yeah. and put a strain on me. And I don't like that. But no. but it's it's, you know, for me personally, it's something that I think I, I, I might. I, I wouldn't mind, you know, I think it'd be kind of cool. I think my kids would be cool. You know, they, they, I definitely raise them right, you know, raise them in a good way. And I, and, you know, and I think it would be good, but I don't think it's bad to not want to have kids. I mean, yeah, there's, you know, you could look at the huge big picture, like most of most nations in the world aren't meeting their replenishment rates for population, you know, like we're going to lose population. We're going to have more old people and very little young people to take care and maintain, you know, and you can go through all these doomsday scenarios and all this and ideas of overpopulation. And really that's not quite the case because more advanced civilizations balance out, you know, and there's all this math and all this, all these statistics and everything. So I don't think there's huge worries in, in all this stuff, but you know, as far as when we break it down to just, you know, you Solavala, which, uh, also, you're an amazing Overwatch player. I, I keep watching your play of the games. Um, but when it comes down to you and your significant other and your fur babies, I mean, if you don't have that drive, that's okay. You know, not everybody not everybody will be a parent, whether by choice or by circumstances. You know, yeah. some some yeah. some people can't have kids. You know, they could adopt if they wanted to, but. They chose not to, you know, it could be something from a lifestyle decision like they, you know, they're comfortable where they are because kids are a financial burden. And if there's any parents 
in the wor- in the, in the chat room, please chime in because we are not the experts on parenthood, so we don't know. But you know, that's that's kind of my take on it, is like I you know, I go back and forth. I definitely don't judge people for not wanting to have kids because it's their choice. Yeah. But I would I would say make an educated choice both for it, you know, weigh the pros and the cons, you know, take take things into account and, and really ask yourself, really think about it. Because in the in the letter or in the TED talk, the woman that was there, she got her tubes tied without having kids, without having things. And that caveat is what made it so hard for her to get the procedure done, become sterilized because she didn't have kids yet. And, yeah. and it is and, so much harder, so much harder for a woman to get sterilized and is a man like it is like yeah it is literally like hey dudes go get a vasectomy and you know for the guys that procedure is reversible for the women it's not so that's, you know that's one reason why that's a big reason why but the problem that i and and i was so angry when i was listening to this ted talk i i, I kind of figured you would be i when i was, uh, listening, I was like oh man i was angry on her behalf i was angry mm-hmm. Because she describes this scenario where she talks about her doctors treating her with a complete lack of respect for her own decisions, you know, Mm -hmm. and putting her through an interrogation level of like five different doctors to actually consent to do the procedure to get a tubal ligation. And Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I mean, I can speak from from 100% experience knowing that when you know that you don't want to have children, you're pretty clear on that fact. You don't yeah. take that lightly because society doesn't let you. There, You're looked upon as a woman to be reproductive. You're looked at as a, you, you're, supp- you're supposed to want to have children is the way yeah. the society raises us in, in the United States. And, and and men men do feel that too, not to the extent of when, that women do, but yeah. I've 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 gotten the comments. I've got the, you know like where's your kids? You know, do you have any children? You know, I was like no, I have cats and a dog. Yeah, you and know, then none the, yet. <laughs> the most horrible thing that happens in the in the whole process is when they kind of give you that. Well, isn't that selfish? Not that your de- that your decision is selfish, and I'm. My rebuttal to that is, and because this is what will will fire me up like nobody's business. Is it is it selfish for me to not want to have a child, or is it selfish of you to tell me that I need to have a child that I don't want? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what the uh, TED Talk lady said too. Yeah, because I, I I I look at someone in disbelief. Like you're you're seriously telling me to have a child that I don't want to have. Like that is, can you see the ridiculousness of that logic? Can you see how how disturbing and destructive that is to tell a woman that she's supposed to have children? And I've met plenty of women in generations before mine who did just that. Mm-hmm. Who had children because it was what it was expected of them as a as a wife. They got married. They had children. And they didn't want those children. They just did it because that was what ex- what was expected of them. And I will tell you for certain that that has a bad effect on many children. <laughs> yeah. Children know when they aren't wanted. Children know when they aren't aren't something that is a priority to a parent. And that societal expectation on a woman, on a and on a man, you know, because I, I I can think I can think of plenty of of dads out there from generations before ours who had kids because again it was what is expected of them. They didn't want to be dads. They weren't ready to mm-hmm. be dads. And it is a it, it it blows my mind that we still have this mindset. It still perpetuates like. The poor women who get married right now, it's like, and they get asked like within hours of being married. So when are you guys planning to have kids? Mm -hmm. It's tough. Yeah. (laughs) Well, you know, it's, it's baked, it's baked into our biology to procreate. You know, it's, it's one of the reasons for life is to 
pass on your genes to the next generation. So it's deeper than just societal. I mean, it's biological in a way, on on a level. And I know in most ways we've rise we've risen above biology because I mean we can change a whole host of things. But it's it's both biology and cultural, you know, yeah. stuff together too that just feeds in because and like, you know, because then someone would say, well, then why don't you know? They're like, why don't you want to have kids? You that's that's, you know, that's and that's why there's such a disconnect when somebody. It was like, well, no, I don't want kids. And it kind of fries their brain for a second. They're like, what? You don't want kids? No, no, I don't. You know? Yeah. I mean, it was baked into me in my DNA when I came out of the womb that I wasn't wanting to have kids. Like, I had zero desire. I didn't want mm-hmm. to babysit. Like, I was forced into babysitting when I was, like, a, a teenager. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're old enough. We need a babysitter. Let's. And I was like, I don't even know what to do with this. I have no desire. To, I, don't, I don't like babies. I don't like little kids. I, I just, it was like this... They were like an anti, like, <laughs> it was just like the opposite. <laughs> and I'm terrible even now. Like, people have babies and they want me to hold the baby. And I'm like, nope, I'm good. I'm good. Mm-hmm. I have no, I have no desire to hold a baby. It does not, I have zero, like, it just does not do it for me at all. Like, it's it's like a repellent, <laughs> if you will. Mm-hmm. Like, take the baby someplace else. I don't want the baby. And, um, <laughs> you know, and it's just... It's tough, you know, to be, to be like that, to feel like that, and to be opposite of what everyone expects you to be, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and as like my when my sister had her uh, had my niece, it was like you know everybody was super super exciting baby and i'm just like that's cool like hey that's cool congratulations <laughs> you had a baby like they're like no. It's a baby. She's having a daughter, and I'm like, "Cool, yeah, yes. uh, you're in, you're an aunt now." And I'm like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." Like, it doesn't it doesn't resonate. And mm-hmm. again, it's this weird thing where you're like, people almost make you feel like you're broken because it's just I don't. It just it's this it's this disconnect that I do I do not have it. I do not have the desire. And for our writer for Solavala. I mean, if I can be an example to you, please, like, it's okay. I, I have a lot of friends now here in Minneapolis where I live who are couples without children. And it's awesome. Like, it's awesome to find other couples that are the same in that respect because, you know, we don't have to worry about a little kid's bedtime or, you know, um, you know, have to be home for the kids or that kind of thing. It's like, hey, it's pretty cool <laughs> to have that. Um, I don't, I don't live that lifestyle, and it's kind of nice to know that there are other people out there that are that are the same way. And I am not alone or broken, so it's mm-hmm. it's tough. But um, I feel for you in your situation where it's not, it's not a cut and dry thing. You know, you you say you go back and forth. I don't know. That almost makes it harder because yeah, it you does. Could, you could make the choice to have them, <laughs> but you could also make the choice not to. And there's like, my path was very clear. Like there was not going to be the other path. That path didn't exist. Mm-hmm. You have it differently, and you know which one is it going to be is your dilemma. Because at certain points, you're going to have to say, time's running out and I've got to choose. Yeah. Well, you know, and I, I will say for the other side of the coin on this one, there are a lot of good, there are a lot of good things about having kids. I mean, you do, you know, you, you, you know, it's, it's the ultimate pet project. You know, you get to, you get something, you know, you make something from nothing and you get to mold it and craft it. You know, you watch it level up, you teach it skills, you know, it's like its own MMO, you know, mm-hmm. and there's there's a you know and i i had a really good upbringing so i had really good parents and they and they took care of me and i was always felt loved and that's something that that you do get with kids more often than not is you get up you know you get a place with love you know because you 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 know if you do want your kids you know if you're not a deadbeat parent you you will love that kid more than anything else in the world you know i i have a feeling i i have this opinion that parenthood and raising a family gets a, ne- a more negative connotations these days than positive ones. So I don't want to completely discount the positive for the sake of embracing the negative. 
that's and that's like I said, that's coming from someone who doesn't have kids. You know, I, I've changed one diaper in my lifetime. That's because my nephew was hanging out with me too long. And I tried to be like, well, sister, when are you coming back? I need to. Oh, he pooped. OK, I guess I have to clean this. And that was a nightmare. Um, so I think that, you know, like I said, there's 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 a lot of good things about raising having a kid, having a family. You know, you get that support structure. Not only do you get to support them, but in some ways they support you. You know, there's that, you know, if you have that dynamic with your children, there's there, you know, I know there's children are can be awful and reckless and and be a complete drain and burden on you financially, emotionally, everything else. But there is, a, you know, there are a lot of good things. My like I said, my friend Daniel, he he he's been in a lot of stress. He has a lot of stressful things with his job and his, you know, all his bills and everything. But he always takes time to show the good parts about being a family. When I spend time with him, mm -hmm. you know, the kids are great. You know, he's put in the time and the work to raise a wonderful family. And I see that and I'm jealous. I mean, I have, you know, I don't have that. I have, it's me and animals that don't live past 15 or 20 years. You know, I have to get a new set of kids every decade and a half, you know, and they always die on me. And that's depressing, you know, whereas, heaven forbid, kids will outlive you mm -hmm. or, you know, heaven forbid they don't, but they usually they should. And to have that in your life is I think it's a good thing on the whole. I mean, you know, barring, you know, you know, like Jules not wanting Jill flat out not wanting them. You know, I, I say there is there is some good to wanting to have a family and, oh, one, sure. and have that thing. There's absolutely good things. I think it's talked down a lot more than it needs to be i disagree with that i i think that for them as someone who feels very much in the minority mm -hmm. that most people are, are taking the path 80 percent are taking the path to build a family and yeah but the opinion once they do have the family that's the thing i was talking about i see well you know it, it is what it, it is what you make of it right like mm -hmm. i look at scott johnson and his family who are mm -hmm. incredible. Um, you know, they are truly the kind of family that everyone would want to aspire to um, because they, Absolutely. you know, they, they are just this bonded unit, family unit. You don't get there without some really hard work and dedication to the, I would call it the craft of child raising. Like you've got to be yeah. good at this to create that kind of, and to have that is amazing. Um, but even that, like, I, I think that they're wonderful. I think that I love watching them as a family. They're, they're just this heartwarming, like powerful unit of five. Yeah. Now six went with their, with it when his daughter got married. But I look at that and I say, that's awesome for them. It's still not for me. <laughs> well, yeah. So, yeah. And so, but I, I think that there's, um, I disagree with the, with the point that it's talked down because like. Go on Facebook any day uh, of the next, like, 30 days, and there's going to be a bazillion pictures of everybody and their kids with Thanksgiving and then Christmas mm -hmm. pageants and stuff for, you know, the elf on the shelf crap and all that stuff is going to be, you know, it's everywhere. <laughs> and so yeah. I feel like I am the anomaly. I'm the one who's looked at, like, you don't want this? Why wouldn't you want this? How could you not want this? And I'm like, how can you want that? I like what mm -hmm. I've got. So, yeah. You know. Well, and I think the, the main point that I always see about why not is because they're a financial burden. And, and I, I do have and I have seen situations where people have kids and they are not financially ready at all. Like they yeah. have nothing. And it, you know, and it's a, you know, and it is a, a delay on them progressing anywhere but that's something where they start having kids they don't have a job or they don't have their education yet or something like this and that it, it is a burden but i mean in people's cases where they have an established thing they've got their jobs they've got their stuff they're kind of they've laid some bit of foundation to where that they could still survive and have kids you know it, it depends on it depends on situation to situation but i think that in 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 just and of course this is just my own personal experience every time that that subject has come up to people. The number one thing that I hear is like, no, they're too expensive. No, I want to keep what I've got. I want to keep what I've got and I don't want it. I don't want to have to do all that. And it's just kind of a, it, it all comes down to dollar signs. 
And I don't think that that's a, I don't think that that looks at the entire situation. I don't think yeah, that's. Yeah, I mean, that would never even occur to me in terms of the, the number one reason. The number one yeah. reason saying, I don't want to raise another human being. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I just, I have zero desire to do so. And um, so, yes, I, I, I think people, people make those arguments against having children for, you know, for the for, for whatever like you know convenient excuse might be there um mm-hmm. if it's you know but in anything when there's a will there's a way you know yeah. for someone who oh, yeah. is, really wants to make that a priority in our lives they're going to go do that um you know i think that for for our writer it's this feeling of how can i be okay with this you know i know how i feel but i know how society keeps telling me how i should feel yeah. And I don't think society necess- I mean society does tell people like don't have kids until you're financially ready to have them because kids are crazy expensive and it'll, you know, bleed your finances dry. Yes, like you'll read that on any parenting blog anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um but for for her, she's looking at it from a perspective of like I feel this way and I feel like I'm not supposed to feel this way. Yeah. Well, you know, and we'll be the first ones to assure you that it's okay to feel that way. It's okay. (laughs) I mean, it's definitely okay to feel that way. You know, I, I'm, I go back and forth myself. I'm in the same boat. You are, uh, just trying to figure it out. But I know that it'll come to a point where it's, well, it's, it's almost too late biologically to do so. So you got to make a call one way or the other, Yeah. but if you're okay with it, if you know, you, you're at a good point in life, you're happy with it and you don't have that urge, then that's okay. You know, we're, you know, we're, uh, society will tell you that that's unconventional. So what? There's a lot of things unconventional about everybody. Yeah. You you gotta stand your ground for what you believe in and what's right for you and your partner, you know? Um, you know, mm-hmm. she's got a, a long-term partner, and they're they're doing okay. So yeah, I mean, I had a. I mean, I had a... does I mean does he feel the same way? You know, that's kind of you know. I I imagine you guys have talked oh, about gosh, this yeah. probably mean... a bunch of times. You know, so and I mean, that... it, be clear on it. Like, be crystal clear on it and yeah. say, "This is how I feel about it." You're still good. You're still all right with this. Like, I mean, I I make that a a priority. You know. It's kind of why dating is so damn hard for for me at my age. It's like I'm very clear about that fact. I don't want to have children at the point that I'm at. I'm 43. Probably not going to have any anyway biologically even if I wanted to. But I don't want anybody else's kids either. And that's mm-hmm. going to, you know, and that makes it hard. And people go, oh, well, what if they're grown? And it's like, no, I still, that means if they're grown, they're going to have grandkids. And I don't want grandkids either. I don't want any of that. And Mm -hmm. so it's this thing of, oh, oh, well, I guess, I guess you're just going to have to to do what you got to do. And it's like, yeah, I would rather make that choice and stand that ground and choose to, to be in a situation that doesn't make me happy. And that has to be for everybody. Like I, I've had friends who had kids and they're the worst sometimes who have kids and you go over to their house, kids are there, everybody's together, you know, like I can be good with kids. I can make them laugh or, you know, whatever. And then the friend turns to me and says, see, why aren't you having kids? You'd be a great mom. And I go, I still don't want them. <laughs> yeah. But you'd be a great mom. It'd be, it, it's a travesty that you don't have kids of your own because you'd be a great mom. And it's like, you don't know me. You don't know what I want. It's like, even if I, yes, okay, so I could be a great mother. It doesn't mean I want to be a great mother, which is a very, very big difference. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So it is a, I just, I just, hate the fact that there is so much pressure on people to reproduce from other people. Like you're, it's your relationship. It's your life. You know, I feel so bad for all of those people who get married and it's the, their, their parents who want the grandkids. Like, 
Mm-hmm. Like, all I want is to be a grandmother, blah, 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 you know, kind of thing. <laughs> That's my life's ambition. And it's like, uh, and you, it's your job to produce children so that I can be a grandma or my grandpa. It's like, I feel so bad for you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's a well, hell of you a know, lot I'm, of pressure. Yeah, well, and, and I know for me, the pressure is off a little bit because I do have my nephew. So <laughs> it's I do have a little bit of the pressure taken off because my sister procreated and I haven't yet, so... I feel a little bit better about that. So, <laughs> if she had not, though, would there be pressure on you to produce grandkids? Yes, big time. Mostly from in here, in in my own head. Ah, okay. And also from exterior play, exterior forces too. But yeah, yeah, it would, the pressure would be there. It's hard. It's hard, and I, I, it is. I get it. I get that. That's you know, but. It's not just it's it's it affects more than it affects so much more than just one person that decision. It does, yeah. I mean, there's this there's there's a whole and there's a whole avenue change when you have kids. I mean, yes. your your life really does change. Everything about your life changes. Yes. You know, you can't you can't go to the places that you could you used to. You okay. can't do the things that you used to. I mean, you are a different person now. You are no longer you know John. You are a dad. You are no longer Jill. You are mom. Yep. You know, it's it reminds me of the episode of Futurama when uh, Amy is going to she's she's wanting to have kids or she, you know, is going to get pregnant and she tells her little calendar, OK, switch to mom mode. And beforehand it had like, you know, surfing on Mars, you know, Jupiter ice skating, all this stuff, all the calendar said so switch to mom mode. And it's like, OK, and every day switches to motherhood, 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 motherhood. I mean, you are bound yeah to that being. yeah i watch people transform when they have kids and sadly i've lost friendships because of that because you know when you're friends with someone before they have children and then you know you've got things in common and you do stuff together and you can go out and you know enjoy the same things and then they have children and those all that changes all of that's gone and as it should be, their focus is 100% on their kids and yep. their relationship. And so I've lost friendships because of that. And I bet you 99% of you who are listening to the show could probably say the same at this point. Unless you're young enough that your friends haven't started having kids yet. And if so, just wait. <laughs> when well, they start you know, getting married, it starts. <laughs> Well, you know, and for me, a lot of my friends, my best friends that have since had kids, uh, if, if some fresh out of high school had kids just a couple mm-hmm. years after that. So now they're teenagers. They have teenage kids for me. And, you know, I don't see them nearly as often as I used to. But for me, the, the just the way that I, I guess I do friendships is that it just gets preserved. Like mm-hmm. I put it in a, in a cryo vault the last time I see them. And then when I see them again, thaws it right out we're just you know yeah we don't go do the things but we're still friends and like i come over you know i talk to their kids like one of my best friend in high school uh his his eldest daughter started beginning band this year and guess what instrument she picked she picked trombone Ooh. partially because i played it that's what he tells me and uh and so i got to talk to her and i got to give her like a, a, a like a lesson via Facebook video and Facebook chat, you know, nice. to help her with some big, you know, and it's one of those things that you, you know, you're, if you're good enough friends with that person, even if you don't want kids yourself, you know, you can kind of keep them at that distance, but they kind of, you know, for me, they kind of become part of that part, an extension of that friendship because they're the kids. And, you know, as long as they're nice to me and, you know, and we've tried to build that little bit of a bond, you know, it's like, Hey, here comes, here comes uncle Mark Oden, you know, then it's then it's fine. That's how I treat my French friendships that I have with people who do have kids. I respect that their their lives have changed, but I still care about them to, you know, talk to them to, you know, come over every once in a while and just do that. And then the subject of kids hasn't come up a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Or if it does, they're, you know, they're pretty understanding, you know, because it's just it's not for everybody. It's only for about 80 percent of the people. And that's okay. It's very true. And uh, so I think, you know, our closing statements on this for Solo is to say, you know, know that you're not alone. Know that Mm -hmm. your feelings are very normal. And Mm -hmm. it is between you and your your body um, and you 
and your partners. Like, if you listen to this TED Talk, the the woman who does this, she says, you know, like, this is something that I've I've known for my entire life, which I completely relate to. And she said, you know, and um, the doctors asked her, well, you've been with this partner for a number of years, but what happens if you break up and you get a different partner? What about then? And she's just like, my answer isn't going to change. I mm -hmm. don't want to have children. And she made an excellent point to say, you know, even if then, if I decided, you know, and I had a tubal ligation and I sterilized myself, it does not mean that that is the only path to motherhood if I were to choose to do so. Yeah, there's always adoption. Yes. And so it was like this finality of of the ways the ways that the doctor stated it was like, well, you know, what if you get a different partner? That feeling of that partner is going to convince you to have children after all the other people, including you yourself, you know, like you said to yourself it's since, you know, being a young girl, I don't want to have kids. So there's going to be this magic man that comes into your life and just says, oh, now you're going to have children with this man. Like it just. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. So I, I I do understand the 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 finality of it of them having caution with it. The condescending tones I don't agree with, but you know it's the it's the this is there's some finality to it. Are you sure? Yeah. You know that's so I can understand their concern. The condescension, no. It just doesn't make sense to me on that front. You like. I can put holes in my ears. I can, you know, I can choose to like physically alter my body in any other ways if I wanted to. And yet I can't, you know, going to a doctor and saying that this procedure that has been medically done for years and years and years requires like five different doctor's approvals and in the psychological evaluation and mm -hmm. it's just this it's a whole nother beast and yeah. it is a you know but nobody cares if i put two holes in my ears and dangle jewelry from them you know and i i mean yes those two are very you know they're very different <laughs> they're very different but the same thing about it is it's my body Mm -hmm. It belongs to me. I can choose whether I want to. I could choose to gouge my eyes out if I wanted to. You know, <laughs> it's just like, I mean, I wouldn't do it. A doctor wouldn't do it without, no. you know, <laughs> but it's just like, I, oh, I, I mean, I know I'm getting trivial about it, but it's just that whole thing about, you know, a, a procedure where I am making an informed choice as, as she was, as Kristen in the TED talk was making a very informed choice about her body and what she wanted and was still met with scathing disapproval. So mm -hmm. that is what we deal with as women in society as a whole. When we say we don't want to have kids solo, remember that, know that that is something that you will have to face and you need to stare it in the face and just, you know, stand your ground. This is how I feel. This is who I am. I'm sorry that bothers you. Yeah. But I know you said you're still deciding, but if you do decide to, that's well within your grasp as well. Sure. Uh, you can't go wrong either way. In the end, you can't go wrong either way. If you decide not to, you'll be fine. If you decide you want to, you'll be fine either way. And people need to respect your choice. You know, they don't have to agree with it. They don't have to like it. That's perfectly OK. Yeah. But they can at least respect it. You yeah. know, because it is your decision. It's yours and your partner's decision. Exactly. And as always, we welcome discussion and feedback for the show. You can send that to questions at torrentthinktank.com. Yes. And, uh, yes. And, uh, or Twitter at Torrent Think Tank and Facebook, facebook.com slash Torrent Think Tank. I can't speak anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so instead of me speaking, we will read. Uh, and we will jump to Tell Us One Thing, which we have some special stuff for this week. So let's do it. We read your submissions because reading your mind would just be creepy. So 
tell us one thing questions they are back it's been a while because yeah we, we figured it welcome out welcome back go. baby welcome back baby uh question one what is one thing you've done this year to make your life a whole lot easier you know and i didn't prep any for this because i forgot because work is a lot and that's actually going to be my answer yeah is work this new job has made my life a lot I don't know if it's easier. I mean, it, it's easier for me to get up in the morning and go to work because I don't dread it. It's easier for me to enjoy a paycheck because it's a little bit bigger. It's it's a lot easier on me because I get to do things that I like to do. I get to talk to people. That's one thing. A couple of my coworkers, they, they want to put their head down and work, run the wires, do all that stuff while I am getting to know the clients, talking to them while I'm working, making them laugh. And it's it, it's, it rejuvenates me to be able to you know, because I, I, I am I ride that line between introvert and extrovert, but it's when I can connect with people and talk to them and make them feel good and happy that 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 bounces back to me. Yeah. So it's it's made it's made my life a lot uh, more enjoyable and I guess by extension easier because it's just I'm happier and that makes things easier. Yeah. So that's 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 what I would say. Nothing much else has changed in the last year other than that is just mostly the job thing. It makes sense, though. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, making your life easier from a position of things that you don't hate anymore or dread having to do every day. Yeah, it's and, just it's just a lot more positive. Yeah, I mean, there's know? that there's some similar responses to that in here from our listeners. I definitely think that qualifies as making your life easier. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What's what's made your life easier this year? Well, this is what inspired this question to begin with. Ah. Um, I thought about this and you know, so I have started using a grocery delivery service. Ooh. And I'll tell you what, I had a problem with allowing myself to do this because I felt like it was lazy. I felt like it was <laughs> I felt like I was I was being a lazy butt because I was not wanting to go to the grocery store and deal with the shopping stuff. And I got Instacart is a service that's in the area and they just started doing delivery in my area within the last month. And I got a coupon. I said free delivery. Try them out. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, all right, I'll try this. Ooh. And it's changed everything because here's what happens. Tell me if this happens to you guys. You hopefully you're you're organized enough to maybe make a list of what you need from the grocery store. Sometimes I was there. A lot of times I just had like a mental picture of what I needed and then I would just shop the aisles and pull what was yeah. on the shelf and that kind of thing. So, and inevitably, you come home and you go, "God damn it, I forgot toilet paper." after you've been to the store and you're like, I just, I'll conserve. I won't go back there until <laughs> next week. I'll wait. So where are the paper towels? Where are the napkins? Yeah. <laughs> Where's the um, tissues? Oh no. Oh, bad decision. Oh no. Uh, and here's what happens mm. now. I, since I meal prep, ahead of time i can actually start shopping during the week and throwing it into the into the instacart shopping cart throughout the week so i'm building the list as i'm going through and then when i'm doing that if i'm if i decide it's time for me to get a delivery set up i put it into the into the delivery service they tell me what time their day they're coming and if i have like this window if i do it the night before then i can still add stuff that i forgot <laughs> Like, yeah. when I opened the cabinet and realized that I needed more olive oil, oh, shoot, I need to get some more of that, and I don't have to run to the store to do it. So it has made my life so much easier to do grocery delivery, and I'm not ashamed to say that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, and you're not tempted to buy – you're not tempted to just pick up stuff that you normally wouldn't. You know, like, nope. oh, no. Kind of like, you know, the, oh, no, the little Debbie little Christmas trees are out now that it's almost Christmas time. Those are delicious. Oh, now I got to get some because yeah. you see it there on the end cap, like designed, placed there by people who want you to buy. Yeah, you they'd must be putting buy pumpkin pies will. at the end caps right now, and I'd be going, oh, I need a pumpkin pie, and I would probably, and you know, like, tis the season, I need two. <sighs> yes. You know, yes. so it, it, it does tamp down impulse buying. So that's that, and, you know, and I know that can help tons of things. So yeah. it's definitely not lazy. I mean, you're just, 
I mean, it does on the face of it, it seems lazy because you're like, well, you don't want to get out and just walk and go do that. It's like, no, that's not quite how the other with that thing. It's like, I just want it to come to me. I just want the things that I want. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I literally just go and I take care of the stuff that I need to. I set the time and I can do other things. You know, I'm mm-hmm. not spending that time. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, so if you're, like, I'll say this, like Instacart keeps sending me these things. Like you'll get free stuff if I send you my code. So if you want one, let me know. <laughs> just send me a tweet or something like that. Um, <laughs> so I'll be like, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, that's what I did, had done to make my life easier. And we asked... Um, our audience, and they had a lot more uh, powerful answers than that. <laughs> but I think that's good. <laughs> yeah. We got a, uh, a message from an anonymous female listener. We call her Katie Derry for our anonymous female listener. Um, I'm a 50-year-old woman who is male to female transsexual and disabled by syncope issues. The one thing I have done this year to make my life easier has been to find myself a counselor to deal specifically with childhood traumas and past relationship issues. While I've while I've compartmentalized while I've compartmentalized and dealt with those things to where I can function pretty well on a daily basis, as I'm sure you're aware, they're still part of what made me who I am. I am my scars is how Illidan put it. Unlike him, I am not my scars, but they are scars that show up from time to time and are very uncomfortable to deal with. Counseling has been helping a lot these past few weeks, even if it involves growing pains. Mm-hmm. And uh, GDSMGL says, still in the process of building the fence in the backyard, but hoping that weather will be nice enough to finish this week. Nice. That'll be uh, make it easier. Broken Bone says, I bought a house. We're now not on top of each other so much. <laughs> that does make it easier, doesn't it? Magic Myth Mayhem says, I graduated from community college. Not going to a four-year, so I'm finished with all rigid formal education. My stress levels have never been this low in my life. No matter what adult life brings, it will never match the stress and damage that was caused by school. Is this what breathing feels like? Yeah. School is tough, man. It is awful. I remember being done with school and realizing I was like, I was free. That feeling where like you go to school and then you've got to come home and you've got to study and do all the stuff after school. And then you're like, all I have to do now is work. I don't have to like bring my work home with me. That's amazing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's it's a pretty cool feeling. When I dropped off my final research paper, which was including surveys 430-something pages long, Wow. when I dropped that big stack of papers off and was just like, there you go, just thunk. And then I got to my car and I was like, I'm done. I'm finished. There's that big weight off your shoulders. It was wonderful. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, Nymeria says, leaving grad school to pr- pursue a career. That's awesome. Awesome. Yes, that's really tough to do. Mm hmm. Zafira is in my boat. Zafira says, new job. Yes. Maybe. 2020 yeah. site says, going to counseling. Definitely. Oh, did I lose Marconin? Hello. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I am. I'm back. Hello. You're frozen for a minute. Yay. Sorry, it's getting a little cold down here. I guess. Um, Kaiafin says, I finally got it through my head that I can't do it all, all the time. I have to take care of me so I can take care of others. I was burning the candle at both ends and lit a fire in the middle. No one can keep that up forever. No, that is very Mm -mm. true. I'm guilty of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Eli CTR says, I am very lucky in that I have it pretty good on the lookout to avoid taking it for granted. Mm Mm-hmm. That's always the risk. Mm-hmm. You got it so good, you didn't know how to, you had it so good. And uh, finally, Mammoth says, I moved in February to be a bit closer to family. That's awesome. That, that makes it easier. Easier on the trip and easier being closer to those that you care about. Yes, and that's having awesome. people close by when you need them, that's yes. a very big deal. Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay, and so then we go to a second Tell Us One Thing question, a special Thanksgiving edition what are you most thankful for this year? Oh, man. Now, this loaded question. Um, second chances. Yeah. I think that's what I'm most thankful for. That's a good yeah. one. That's a very good one. Yeah. I mean, I guess mine kind of echoes that. Um, this Thanksgiving is the anniversary of a very difficult time. 
And mm -hmm. it's coming like tomorrow is two years of marking that time. Um, and, and it's bittersweet because it's very hard to remember. And at the same time, it's changed everything. And I wouldn't have what I have now if it didn't happen. So mm -hmm. I am most thankful for um, just, ha again, ha like you said, having a second chance um, at, at a new life. And, you know, it's it just continues to get better. <laughs> so absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's pretty <laughs> incredible. So it really is. So MGL, uh, uh, sorry, GDS MGL says good health for my little girl and that she is here. That's a good thing to be thankful for. Yes, very much so. Broken Bones says there are lots of things to be thankful for, so I will go with the most recent. My mother was able to fly from Texas to spend Thanksgiving with us in Virginia. Oh, that's awesome. That's very Glad cool. she's able to visit. That's cool. Magic Myth Mayhem says, the communities I have found through Twitch and Discord, including Triple T, of course, my life would be very different without the friendships and bonds I have forged through these platforms. Thankful today and every day. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Zafira says, community and family. Oh, yeah. Namiria941 says, finding community with my fellow actors and geeks. 2020 site says my relative health, my family's relative health, and the recent inspiration to try new things, both professionally and personally, and being able to go to BlizzCon because I needed that so badly. Yeah, it was really awesome seeing you again there, 20. It's been too long. It's been way, way too long. She gives good hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Kaifin says being alive and having the friends in guild and in quote unquote real life that I have. There has been so much that has been that has gone wrong with my health that in May I wasn't really sure I'd be here right now. And without the encouragement and support of so many people, it would have been so much easier to give up. We're glad you're still here. Mm -hmm. Eli CTR says, thankful for the advancements in the treatment of diabetes, especially the approval of multiple forms of artificial pancreas for use in the treatment process. One day soon, my granddaughter may be able to give up being a pincushion. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's that is really awesome. The progress that they've made with that. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Memeth says, uh, my kitty Suki be loves to be petted and is trusting of me and let me pet her belly at times. That's the, the love best. Of, yep, the love of a fur baby. That is unconditional. Oh gosh, that is the best. <laughs> uh, and finally, from our anonymous writer Katie Daria, Katie Daria, <laughs> the one thing I am thankful for this year is that as a disabled member of the LGBT community, I have survived in this political climate and that the GOP has not been able so far to either outlaw who I am, take away all of my rights, nor have they caused me to lose the Medicaid that is essential to keep me and also my disabled wife alive. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that too. And that is tell us one thing uh, mm -hmm. that you guys are welcome to contribute to all of our tell us one thing questions in multiple ways on Twitter at Torn Think Tank on Discord, which is tinyurl.com slash TTT chat too. We also post them on Facebook, facebook.com slash Torn Think Tank. And if you want to submit it anonymously, you can do so at our uh, email address, which is how it was done this week for an anonymous writer, and that was questions at torrentthinktank.com. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the way have, to do it. We have one slash moo, so we will do that. Mm. And you can read this because my name is in here. <laughs> uh, yeah, your name is in there. Uh, this one comes to us from Kaifin. A huge, enormous super slash moos to Nevar and CTR, Frog Sprout and CTR, Jules, Turarts, and everyone in the wings that has helped with a little BlizzCon project for me. I truly could not have done anything without you all. Someday I can someday I can repay you all for everything. For now, I give you my love and hugs for all you did. Well, it was our pleasure. Um, we, we provided some uh, much needed uh, support and, uh, and a smile to a guild member uh, battling cancer. And uh, mm -hmm. it took a, a large effort for us to do that while we were at BlizzCon, and we were more than happy to do so. So, yeah, that was Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and that, Mark Conan, is a show. 
It is, and on a Wednesday, no doubt. On a Wednesday, no doubt, for sure. I feel like it still it feels weird to be doing this on Wednesday. It's like it's the same <laughs> time, it's the same yeah. thing, it's the routine, everything. It's just weird. I don't know. I don't know. It's just odd, but it's good. It, we did it. We made it happen. Yeah, we did, and it was fantastic. <laughs> it was. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, what part of the meal tomorrow are you looking most forward to? Well, we're doing a little unconventionally because of um, we're we're meeting at my in laws at my grand at her grandparents' house, and her grandparents there. We don't want them to cook or anything, so when they we have a lot of kids, a lot of youngins coming around. Yep. So we're doing we're doing pizza as a, as a main course. Nice. So we're doing pizza and then some sides. And for me, it's uh, my wife's cheesecake. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. I love cheesecake. It, yeah, me too. I love cheesecake. Last cheesecake I had was at BlizzCon at Cheesecake Factory. It was so I good. never made it there this year. Oh, man. What you kind can did ask you get? Eve, I got red velvet. Nice. And it is so good. You can ask Eve Alani about it. We we went we all like six of us went back to back to Eve and Mage's <laughs> hotel room and ate it because we didn't want to sit around uh, there and eat it. We just got it to go. It was just everybody just chowing down like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it was just we just all just got the sugar rush together. It was fantastic. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that sounds so good. Yeah. Uh, I didn't what make you... it there this year, but. Um... The so what I'm looking forward to the absolute mm-hmm. most I'm hoping because not everybody every not every household does this and this would be my first time going to Pat's mom's house for Thanksgiving is pumpkin pie. Oh uh, yeah. So because sometimes people don't like it, so they don't they don't do it, and so I yeah you don't like it. So um, not not that big on pumpkin. Uh, I just there's something about pumpkin pie that I absolutely love, and I didn't like it when I was a kid. It yeah. was like when I got older is when I really got into it, and uh, so yeah, I'm super hoping that there's pumpkin pie tomorrow. <laughs> if there's not, that's okay. I I'll go and I'll get it someplace else. Like I must I must have some pumpkin pie. Like I've been really good with my eating and stuff, and so I've just been. And uh, that's the pumpkin pie is what I want. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know, you'll have a little have a little bit of cheat meal here and there. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely a permitted cheat meal for certain. Um, oh yeah. You know. I mean, I'm working my butt off. So. <laughs> yeah, um, you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be an awesome an awesome day. And then we'll be back again next week with our normal time, normal day. Uh, for everything else that happens in between now and then. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we, we hope you guys, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, please enjoy it. Yes. We hope that it brings you together with the people that you love the most, whether they be family, friends, coworkers, whoever. And uh, please be careful through the Black Friday uh, and Small Business Sunday and all of that, uh, Small Business Saturday, all that stuff this weekend. Please be kind to those of, uh, those of us in retail, whether they be the uh, salesperson, the cashier, the customer service person, we all desperately want you to have a wonderful holiday season. But we can only do that if you help us out by not being super mean. So please be kind and uh, be nice. And we will do the same to you, I hope. I know I will. If you're nice to me, I'm nice to you anyway. Hug so. a retail worker today. <laughs> yes. Give the t- tell them how much you appreciate what they do because they do. People went into uh, as I left work today at seven o'clock. They were walking in to work all night, to and like and a lot of them have families. They have kids that you know they don't get to see on Thanksgiving. So you know, be appreciative. Yeah, you know, your I know company's I'm, I know open I'm, on Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yeah, and a lot of them are. And I'm preaching to the choir because I know you guys and gals in the Moo Crew are the nicest people in the world. Mm-hmm. But just to send it out to the universe so that maybe some person out there will see. You know, please just be kind to retail people. Let them know how much you appreciate what they do because, yeah, you're just fighting off a tryptophan-induced coma sl- sludge of a day, you know, trying to stay awake after all that turkey, go deciding to go to Walmart or wherever. But they had to be up at the crack of dawn to be there, and they're running on like two hours of sleep on a fifteen-hour shift. So, just be nice. Yes, yes. <laughs> I will be happily sitting in my pajamas on Friday, shopping at my computer. 
<laughs> that's what I'll be doing on Friday. So with nothing that, wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. With that, we'll bring the show to a close as we always do, just like this. Torrent Think Tank is a proud member of the Signals Media All-Star Network. Find out more about the other great shows in the network by going to SignalsMedia.com. Portions of the music and sound effects heard on this show can be found at Incomputech.com and Freesound.org. You can find us outside of the show on our website. That's at TarnThinkTank.com, which has all of our podcasts and information on how to get in touch with us, too. And speaking of retail and supporting all these uh, adventures, you know you want some Triple T merchandise under your Christmas tree, under your menorah, or everything else that you want this holiday season. If you want to find some cool shirt like T-shirts, sweatshirts, laptop cases, all these cool things, just go to TarnThinkTank.com slash store and check it out. And thank you to all who support our show via Patreon. If you would like to help mm. out Triple T, you can do so at patreon.com slash Tank. It makes a nice holiday gift for us. <laughs> 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 Want to meet other members of the Triple T community? You can join our Discord server. The quick way to get there is tinyurl.com slash tttchat2. Mm -hmm. You can also like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Tarn Think Tank is where to find that. You can find us at 280 characters or less on Twitter, at Tarn Think Tank for the show, at Jules RPG for Jules, and at Marcon and Mao for me. I love the 280 character thing so much. Me too. Oh, I love Feel it. Such So much more eloquent. I can, I can use punctuations. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, no more abbreviations. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, chat room, for being with us tonight and hanging out every Thursday night at 8 o'clock Central. You can find the yeah. video stream at twitch.tv slash Think Tank, and we love seeing you here with us, however you consume the show. Yes, Mark Honan. Jules. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Enjoy yourself. I will, and you do the same. And tell Pat, tell Pat I said hi. I will. I will. And we will be back next week on Thursday. You guys have a wonderful holiday yourselves. For myself, for Mark Honan, for the entire chat room. Until next time. Slash Moo, everybody. Slash Moo. Torin Think Tank. We make your problems less bad. This podcast is a part of the Signals Media All-Star Network. For more information on this and other fine shows, go to SignalsMedia.com. It's okay to stick our stuff in your ears. Really? Really? <laughs> really? Pasha, Play. I'm so hey, glad Pasha. that you made it, girl. I'm very yeah, I'm glad the topic was of was of uh interest and timely. <laughs> yeah, we're glad you could make it. It's not an easy discussion to have, you know, and, and but the letters no. always help us. And like, listen to that TED talk, man. I'll link that one more time in the chat room for sure. Like, this is. I got mad when I was listening. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, yeah, I, maybe the, it's because there's a space in between the one and the exclamation. Oh, is there? Okay. I think if you copy the whole thing. Yeah, just copy the whole that. thing and then just kind of chunk it in there. Um. So. Most definitely, yes. I love that. Um, yeah, that'll. It, it and it's like I. I mean, like, I was listening to that TED talk and I just wanted to punch something. I was just like, oh my <laughs> god, because I had actually thought about doing the same. Like I had thought about you know, um, getting my tubes tied because and it it's like still didn't work. It still doesn't work. I know it's yeah. dumb. Yeah. Oh well. But, yeah. Y'all can piece it together. Y'all are smart. <laughs> <laughs> you tech savvy. You can do it. Um, yeah, you got this. You got this. Yeah. I had thought about doing it years ago because, I mean, it's just, it's not something I, it's something I know that I'm not going to ever do. And it's like the, you know, and she, she kind of glossed over this too, but it's a very expensive procedure to go through as well. Like it's, it's not covered by insurance. It's, you know, mm -hmm. so uh it's just yeah no they didn't go through Drayden. no titles i didn't see them nope no titles yet oh, might wait. have to uh might have to split them up i'm gonna go take some antihistamine or something i'm still kind of stopped up yeah you, you sounded like you, you didn't have it going on while we were during the show like i didn't i couldn't tell like i did when you first got on the call 
Yeah, I it it felt a little bit better, but now I I, I sneezed a couple times and I'm just kind of like Ugh. everything just goes. Yeah, you know, just one thing to note too, um, that I've learned recently through my um, th- through my nutrition lessons, is yeah. that that type of thing can happen as a food allergy sometimes. Mm. So if you've changed certain things in your diet recently, which I know that you have. Um, if you're eating some things that you hadn't eaten before, just take it Mm. into like a mental note and say, when I eat this, do I start feeling more congested or less? Mm. That's a good idea. I can definitely start being more aware of that for sure. It may not be. It may not be at all. It may not be. But I know like it might be because like I sometimes when I eat red onions, I get this like burning in my like behind my ears. My ears start to like. You know, like when when you're um, like if you rub your ear really hard and it gets red and hot, mm-hmm. that's what it feels like when I after I eat a red onion. <laughs> like, so it's this mm. weird like just and it's harmless. Like I'm not I'm not like throat swelling up or anything like that. Yeah. But um, as I was reading these lessons and it was talking about all the things that can happen when you have reactions to food or intolerances to food, and it was like congestion and um. You know, I was like, oh, oh, that could be interesting. Like, because there's an antihistamine thing that happens. Yeah. Certain ones. That's interesting. So, anyway, uh, titles. No titles, <laughs> no numbers. <laughs> Hashtag holiday goals. <laughs> that could be uh, a contender. Yeah. I love my nerdy tree. <laughs> Uncle Nina Nin- Cram and the Salute. Yeah. Gobble, gobble, punch and pie. <laughs> I like hashtag holiday goals personally. Yeah, that's okay. that's fine. That's okay. Fine. I get, I yeah, get this you're one. Twi- look, you're twisting it. You're twisting my arm. Oh, no. Uh, great. <laughs> Just great. Just great. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Oh, see, it just feels like an odd thing to do a show today. Uh, just it admit. does, but you know, we've got you know an extra day. The day yes. we lost between last week and this week, we get to make up next time we'll or next up. week. Little Garris is sleeping in his bed right over here. He's just hanging out, doing his thing. Oh, he's so cute. So this morning I, I got up and, uh, you know, kind of rolled out of bed late because I um, had stayed up late for convert to raid. So I woke up later than normal, like half an hour later. Um, so I'm kind of dragging my butt through the house and kind of <laughs> just, you know, kind of sort of. And I go to turn my computer on and I sit down in my chair and he immediately leaps onto my chest and uh, while I'm sitting in my desk chair and just wants to be held and just like he gets on my chest and he'll just sit here. And so I, I hold him for a minute and he flips over uh, on his back. And like uh, it was it was an immediate like you are cuddling me now. And I was just like, <laughs> it's 65 degrees in the house and I need my sweatshirt and I can't get up because you're you're sitting on me. <laughs> so. uh. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was basically the the result of drive by cuddling. Oh yeah, yeah. I went to uh, what was it Monday night? Yeah, Monday night. I uh, I cooked dinner and I was watching like the first bit of Dancing with the Stars in the living room. It's always a little bit of it, and uh, Pixie got right in my lap and just laid flat. <laughs> and I could tell she was relaxed because her tail was like over my leg and then just down, like oh, it yeah. wasn't moving at all. It was completely limp, and she was just. It's just stretched out on her tummy, just stretched out on my lap. Aww. And she was she was like falling asleep. You know, she just like this is, you know, she bothers me all day because this is where she wants to be. Like, she just wants to be right here in the lap. Yep. Just laid out. Yep. And she was she was really happy, really relaxed. <laughs> I got your lap. <laughs> it's like, finally, waiting all week for this lap. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is. It is an awesome thing. So, yep, I've been, uh, I was accosted by cat this morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I shall take it. <laughs> Drive by cuddling. Uh, all right. I think we're going to get out of here. 
We're going to mm-hmm. get everything. I might post the show tonight. We'll see. We'll see how I feel about it. If I don't post it tonight, I will post it on Friday morning. Um, mm-hmm. But the Twitch, obviously, the Twitch VOD will be there. So Yeah. Chat room, thank you guys for coming out on a Wednesday to hang out with us. It was very nice to have you here, as always. And uh, Yeah, it was. Thank you. Thank you, you for coming out on the special day. Yes. The, the unconventional day. The unconventional, yes. I, I, every time I hear that, I think about I watch Project Runway while I while I'm on the treadmill, and they mm-hmm. have the unconventional challenges on Project oh, Runway. Okay. So I keep thinking of that like terminology. Every like time a word association. Yeah, I'm like almost. I've been binging like as far back as Hulu would have the Project Runway seasons. So I've been. Yeah. Like I think I've watched like eight seasons of Project Runway or something like that so far. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to figure out something else. Probably yeah, Top Chef. Out. The next one I think is going to be Top Chef. I'll, I'll watch that one next. There's a lot of episodes of that. So oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. I love I to... competition reality shows when I'm on the treadmill. It's perfect, perfect treadmill watching type of fodder. Yeah. I was a big fan of Chopped. Whenever I, I love Chopped. It. Yes. It's like, oh, that's so weird. I kind of want to try it, though. There's always oh, no. that asshole contestant too like all of them are either like they're either like the total asshole chef or they're the i lack complete confidence in myself chef that's exactly what they are (laughs) it's like uh why don't you just why are you here how did you get on prove that i'm worth it that this was the right career choice for me (laughs) yeah i uh, i heard on the radio this morning that coming in like january family feud is coming to little rock and they're going to want families on there like, oh, man, I would love to meet Steve Harvey and be on Family Feud. Oh, my gosh. That would be awesome. That would be so fun. That's that. Oh, man. If you need a good laugh, go find a compilation of Family Feud answers with Steve Harvey. Because that not alone will the answer make you laugh, but Steve Harvey's face. When he hears the answer, will make you laugh. Because it's uh, like, there's some weird people they put on that show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't know if I'm weird enough to be on the show if I, I try it out. Everybody in in, uh, in Little Rock area is just going to be too polite to be able to be yeah. on that show. <laughs> it's like, they're not they're too white bread over here. We <laughs> kind of plain Jane. I can't. Can't, can't deal with that. You get a little grandma in there is just like you know, yeah. answering questions about YouTube and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, then watch her have the weirdest, dirtiest answers though. Oh, of course they are. They're the best. <laughs> Back in my day, grandma. Uh, granny. Jeez. We said we weren't gonna do this. <laughs> we had a family pact. We had a meeting about this. <laughs> We swore we weren't going to talk about it on TV. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Punchy has started. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Anyway. All right. We're out of here. (laughs) All right. Go get some rest. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Slash everybody. Slash everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.